Well, here we are in the hangar, or the hangar workshop, and uh, this video is in response to the requests that I've had, or questions that I've had, about how is it I go about uh, making these movies that I make? Uh, what camera do I use? That kind, of, that kind of thing. So I thought I'd do a little bit video today, since I can't go outside and fly, it's snowing. Winter storm warning kind of thing. Anyway, I uh, thought I'd do a little video on uh, the cameras and such, and techniques such as they are that I use to do this. Uh, I bought about a year or so ago a little camera that is was made by Kodak. Uh, they are, of course, don't exist anymore. They, they uh, went out of business. Um, but before they did, they had gotten into providing some digital photography sort of products. And uh, this one is called uh, I think the Playful, something like that, or, I don't know. Uh, it's a little three and a half ounce uh, camera that has an, uh, a removable SD card here in this little thing. Uh, it also has, you can, has a little uh, USB that just pops right out for when you want to connect it to the computer to transfer it. It's a built-in lithium battery. Like I said, it weighs at the out, at, outside about three and a half It weighs three and a half ounces. So, barely a hundred grams. So anyway, as advertised, three and a half ounces. Um, it's got a screen on the back, which is kind of nice. I don't hardly ever look at the screen when I'm photographing, because what I generally do is I took a ball cap, an old kind of beat up one, and I glued some foam on here, foam and tape, um, to get the angle that I needed uh, so that the camera's hopefully pointing the right direction. And I use a little extra rubber band here to help kind of hold it, but I've got Velcro on the camera. Where is it? Here we go. Velcro on the camera, both sides, because I, sometimes I fasten it to the plane, but I'll talk about that in a minute. But anyway, I can stick it on, the, on my ball cap. Let's see, I put the rubber band over two to kind of help maintain this angle. I'll keep it back against there and maintain the angle. And then, with it on my head, I try to get it to where just this brim is at the top of my vision. And I found that by doing so, doing that, I've got a pretty good, you know, angle with the camera. It's a little goofy, but it works for me. Uh, one of the other guys... Uh, on YouTube has a has bought one of these um, high definition cameras. Really nice. Uses a headband and it's got a little laser range, you know. But they're like 300 bucks. This little jewel, I paid 45 dollars for at Walmart. Now you can find them online for about that too. Um, but they're going fast because, as I said, I think it was last year that Kodak went out of business, so they're not making them anymore. But there are two or three different other ones out there. Um, the Vitar has one, but it's heavier than three and a half ounces. I'm, I, can, I think that's kind of critical. Keep that thing light. It's not, say, as light as some of the keychain cameras that are out there. But uh, I can put it on a plane with powered by about 2200 kV motor, and it works just fine. And I'll talk about that in a moment. Then, well, this one I've had for a while. Then... Before Kodak went out of business, they came out with a high-definition version. And both of these, by the way, supposedly can submerge. That was part of their, I don't know, marketability, supposedly. But they never really, I don't think they really ever took off. Because the camera is really no better than you're going to find in a good smartphone. It um, has a good frame rate. This one in HD is actually 720p. This other one is... Like 480 or something, or whatever, whatever their, their standard sort of cell phone camera would have been. Of course, the newer smartphones are are HD. I don't, I'm not familiar with the spec enough to tell you if they're 720 or more, but the 720 is not bad, not bad at all. Uh, again, it has a screen. Again, it has this end that comes open, and it has a built-in lithium battery. 
It has the USB that comes out, and it has a removable SD card, so you can upgrade how much memory do you want. Um, both of them you can you can preview them. You can watch the movie on the camera. And again, I can mount that on here, or as I said before, it can be put on a plane. Now I'm going to grab my new snow owl uh, to use as an example. Um, the previous snow owl that I built, the first one, I cut a slot, and I do it generally between the uh, where the canopy is and this hatch area, because that puts me pretty much over the joint where the, um, or just behind actually, where it took the le projected the leading edge where that would come together, because that's basically where I can put the battery, I noticed on this, and it, and it balances. So I'm really only adding weight right over the center of gravity anyway, so it's relatively neutral other than, I may have to, on some of the models, sometimes I've got to tweak the elevator up a click, but usually not much, or not at all. So anyway, I just make a slot that's slightly narrower than the width of the camera, and of course with the action of the soft Velcro make it a little bit thicker. There's enough friction that it holds it right in place. I don't just slide it down just to where the the uh, lens portion is still still above the, the cockpit line. I'll do it like this so you can kind of get the impression of it. Still above the cockpit line and of course making it purely perpendicular to the uh, to the wing, to the main wing, I can put it backwards review of the control services and tail, or I can point it forwards for more of a pilot's view. Either way. And that's, now, you're thinking, oh man, you're taking this flat thing and shoving it through the air. Well, yeah, I am. I think it's proof's in the pudding. I, just, I did it just on a lark one day, and whoa, it worked. Now, is it creating drag? Absolutely. Is it noticeable? Eh, a little bit. You know, it probably flies a little bit slower. I barely notice it, really, in the handling of the plane or whatever. And as you can see in the videos of things, pretty much does everything it ever ever did. So it's like a minor air brake, maybe, but not much. Anyway, that's basically how I do it. Now I'm going to go into the post-production. Once I've got the video captured, where I go from there. Is it on? Yes, it is. Now, I want to show you, just briefly, some of the things I do to make a movie. Now, I'm, I'm using iMovie on my Mac. And, like I said, these things just, just connect by using the little USB. I can literally stick them right into the side of the computer over here and, and transfer it right into iMovie. Now, once I've done that, in this case, you can see this field up here showing me the, the movie that I just made. I select an entire clip. And I pull it down into the uh, editing area here. And then I can do all kinds of stuff with it. For instance, I want to add a title. Like There's titling here. Okay, there's that. So that's, that's pretty simple. Now, in fact, let me go ahead and just, I'm going to use this one, and I'm going to pop it on here at the beginning, and then all I do is just fill all that in, but there we go. I'll do all that later. But what I want to show you here is a method that I use, because as you're flying these planes, uh, you can get them, I mean, I flew them right by my head, which is kind of fun, I guess. Anyway, but uh, I have been hit, because... Uh, Sometimes the wind shifts a bit, or I'm not so hot, you know, that day, not so sharp, and bang, they hit me, hit, hit my cap, get my ball cap up, you know, whatever, and usually it's, not that doesn't bother me any, but it kind of can be hard on the plane, I mean, they're made out of foam and whatnot. Um, I want to show you a, a particular one that I did, let me find it here, yeah, that's not it, okay, here we go. I just posted this one recently, and there's a sequence in this that I want to show you what I had done, because it makes a rather effective sequence. Yes, here we go. Now this one, this sequence here, which let me get the 
camera up here, you can see it very well, but it, uh, the plane comes from far back, and it's a long, you, you get to watch it for a long, long time. That's because I have slowed it down to 25% of actual speed. But the other thing that I've done in order to maximize the view of the plane as, it, as it's rolling through this sequence is I go up here to crop. Oh, pardon me. I select the image to crop. So I now you can see there's this green box. Let me get this up a little closer. You can see the green box around it. And so I'm able to, to crop out everything but that box. But what I do to make sure that I've got the plane in, the, in this box for the whole thing. And, and I cut out the rest of the image. So again, the image you end up with is, uh, is, is more filled with the plane, I guess I'm almost saying. It has more plane in it than, than anything else. So as you can see, I, I can manually roll through it as I, as I edit and be sure that the plane doesn't exit the box. That's a, that is that I've created as small a crop box as possible and still kept the object, the plane, in view through the entire sequence. And of course, I got the music in the background. Which is the other thing. I will move pieces around. You can do, uh, of course, copy, paste, or cut and paste, actually, and move them around. And you can also, by clicking on the box like that, double clicking on that, it creates this other menu here, and you can change the speed of the video. You can also uh, change the chroma levels and the color saturation. But some of these, uh, because of the poor lighting I was shooting in, because of the overcast day, I had to, to really bump that up, or it was really a dark, and that helped. Dark video. So anyway, uh, also, uh, you have transitions in iMovie uh, that allow you to, um, let me back this down a bit here again, that allow you to do cross dissolves, or the uh, uh, little thing where, the, where it all goes, what do you call it, fade, fade to, or circle, circle close, uh, there's a fade to black, there's all kinds of different uh, possible transitions, just as there are um, titles. You can also, there's also a feature where you can add still photographs if you wish. So anyway, and then of course there's the music, I just, it pulls up your iTunes anyway, file. And I just, that's pretty much it. Uh, I just use uh, the newscast sort of thing here, which you've, I'm sure you've seen before, and then I can type in what I wanted to say, and I try to get the little sunrise thing there to kind of follow the plane or be on the plane. I thought it was kind of interesting effect. And then I can come in and put titles in like this. Anyway, that's how it, uh, that's how it works. Anyway, there it is. Uh, that's pretty much how I do it. Very simply. And Hope you enjoyed it, and that's a wrap.